Investigation by the Indian Express newspaper has revealed that China has been tracking prominent Indians from the fields of politics, business, sports and media. The list includes Vion's editor-in-chief Sudhir Chaudhary who has been targeted over Vion's critical coverage on China. In fact, China has been monitoring over 10,000 influential Indians as part of what is known as hybrid warfare. Let's first tell you about the names that have surfaced. The list includes Prime Minister Narendra Modi, President Ramnath Kovind, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh, leading opposition leader and Congress Party's interim president Sonia Gandhi, also being monitored. Also on the list are West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee, the Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan, Chief Justice of India and the Chief of Defence Staff. The report says a Chinese firm called Zenua uses non-military tools to harvest the data of these influential Indians. This includes scraping information from web and social media platforms. Data is also mined by keeping a track on research papers and news articles. An important part of the surveillance process is building family trees, which means that the target's relatives are also being monitored. The question is, why is China doing this and why is it a matter of concern? This monitoring is part of threat of intelligence, threat intelligence, and comes amid heightened border tensions between India and China. China has been trying to get hold of strategic information. Earlier, India banned more than 100 Chinese applications over security risks. That number has since gone up. The Chinese database extends to former heads of state as well. Five former prime ministers and two former presidents also finding themselves on that list, in addition to 24 chief ministers and close to 350 members of parliament. In all, 1,350 politicians are being monitored by China in India. These numbers show just how extensive the Chinese database is. They have files even on deceased leaders like Rajiv Gandhi. Let's also tell you about the Chinese firm Zenua, which is at the forefront of this cyber espionage campaign. Zenua Technology is based in the Chinese city of Shenzhen and was registered as a company in 2018. It has 20 centers across the world and its clients include Chinese military and the government. The firm took down its website on the 9th of September. Zenua refused to answer the Indian Express's questions saying that the questions touched upon the firm's trade secrets. However, a source in the Chinese embassy in New Delhi told the Indian Express that China has not asked its companies to provide or collect data. Robert Porter, who is a Canberra-based cyber security tech and data expert, who worked with the team to verify the electronic antecedents of the Zenua data set, gets us this report. Take a look. It's been really interesting to work on this project with Vaide and the team at the India Express uh, to bring this important information to light. So when we first received the information, we only received part of it because we wanted to make sure that it was going to be it was worth our time in restoring it. We then worked for three months to restore a version of the data to the point where it could be searched and studied by journalists for the purposes of future publication. It's a very interesting data set in as much as a very ambitious data set and sits in alignment with the objectives of the company who talks about using it for the purposes of engaging in hybrid warfare and political influence operations. It's possible to scrape open source uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok data and use that to create a profile of a person. This information in this case was also combined with uh, data from anti-money laundering systems. Uh, for example, some people are registered as special interest people or relatives or close associates of various important people. They're tagged through those systems and the whole and all of that data is put together to create a profile of the human political information and technology terrain of a country to make it easier to understand that influence. Well, I can't imagine that it's going to do China a lot of good. Uh, that being said, though, uh, as China and India mature into advanced uh, 
you know, capable economies with role to play on the global stage, uh, a degree of that comes with scrutiny. So, for example, the intelligence programs of the United States are generally open to a fair amount of criticism on any given day. And I think if China wants to play in the top ring with the, best, with the biggest countries in the world, they can expect this sort of scrutiny to come their way.